Hey everyone, welcome back. We're, uh, we're going to be doing a deep dive today on something pretty big. It's about these potential investigations into COVID-19 that seem to be gaining momentum. And uh, yeah, we've got this transcript here that really lays out some fascinating stuff about Trump's latest moves and what they could mean, especially when it comes to holding people accountable. You know, specifically looking at the Chinese Communist Party's potential role in all of this. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like, uh, you know, from the get go, just looking at these new appointments that Trump is putting together a very specific team here, it's hard not to see a clear goal in mind with all this. Right. OK, so let's break it down a bit. Who are these key players? We've got Robert F. Kennedy Jr. at the helm of Health and Human Services. That's got to raise some eyebrows, right? He's never been one to shy away from controversy. Yeah. Especially when it comes to vaccines and public health in general. Right. And it's crucial to remember that HHS oversees agencies like the FDA and the CDC, you know, the ones that were right in the thick of the pandemic response. So oh. having someone like Kennedy lead an HHS, who's been a pretty vocal critic of these agencies in the past, well, it could signal a major shift in how those agencies are investigated and maybe even how they're restructured going forward. Yeah, it's almost like putting a fox in charge of the hen house, isn't it? That's one way to put it. And it's not just HHS either. Trump's also made some pretty strategic appointments within the Justice Department, specifically individuals with backgrounds in prosecuting organized crime. That's got to send a message. Mm. Organized crime. That makes me think more mafia than pandemics. Okay. How does that even apply here? Thank well, that's where this thing called the RAYO Act comes into play. It's a pretty powerful legal tool. It lets prosecutors go after entire criminal enterprises, not just individuals. So if the investigators find evidence of a coordinated effort, you know, to cover up information or mislead the public or even mess with data tied to the pandemic, well, then the R.I. back could be used to prosecute everyone involved. And that could even implicate institutions, organizations, even whole countries, potentially. Wow. OK, so we're not talking about just a slap on the wrist here. It sounds like they're going after the whole system. Mm -hmm. So who's in their crosshairs exactly? The source mentioned Marjorie Taylor Greene. She seems pretty sure there are going to be some serious prosecutions coming. Yeah, and she used the phrase crimes against humanity, which d definitely suggests they mean business. It's worth noting that she's been a huge advocate for holding the Chinese Communist Party accountable. She's been saying that they deliberately hid information and basically let the virus spread unchecked. So if they're really going after the CCP, we're talking about huge global implications, right? Absolutely. This could completely change the game when it comes to U.S.-China relations. Think about it trade agreements, global alliances. It's a high stakes situation for sure. There's potential for conflict, obviously. But there's also a chance for some kind of international reckoning. You know, maybe this could change how pandemics are handled in the future. It's starting to feel like we're on the edge of something really big here. Almost like everything we thought we knew about global health and how countries interact is being challenged. I think that's a pretty good way to put it. And the source makes a really interesting point about the pandemic's origin story. They call it the dragon stone of politics. It's a pretty powerful image. OK, I'm hooked. What does that even mean? Well, it suggests that the truth about how this pandemic started holds a lot of power. Whoever controls that narrative, whoever can really expose what went down and hold the right people responsible, well, they're going to have a huge amount of influence on a global scale. So it's not just about getting justice for the victims. It's about who gets to write the history of this whole thing and who ultimately controls the narrative going forward. That's pretty heavy stuff. Exactly. And that brings us to another fascinating development. Just after Trump appoints a new SEC chairman, the editor-in-chief of Science Magazine suddenly resigns. Talk about a coincidence. Hold on, Science Magazine. As in one of the most prestigious scientific journals out there. What's the connection? Well, science played a major role in shaping the pandemic narrative. Remember, they published research and articles, you know, the kind of stuff that really swayed public opinion and influenced all those policy decisions. So if these investigations start targeting scientific journals, looking for conflicts of interest or research that got buried or even data manipulation, well, it could turn the whole scientific community upside down. That would be devastating for public trust in science. I mean, if we can't even rely on these institutions anymore, who can we trust? It really raises some tough questions about how scientific research is done, funded, and shared, and how we can even be sure the information we're getting is accurate and unbiased. It's a fundamental problem. Wow, this is getting really deep, and I feel like we've just scratched the surface here. Oh, we're just getting started. We haven't even touched on the potential legal battles, the economic fallout, or how this will affect pandemic preparedness in the future. There's so much more to unpack. You're right. 
we're going to need a whole lot more time to dig into all of this. But mm -hmm. for now, let's uh, let's take a step back and let all this sink in. When we come back, let's delve into those potential legal avenues for these investigations and what kind of evidence they might be looking for. This is going to be fascinating. Sounds good to me. And I think it's crucial to think about the potential roadblocks these investigations might face, both legal and political. This is going to be a long and complicated process for sure. So before we uh, we took a little pause there, we were talking about how these investigations could really shake up the scientific community. I mean, it, it turns out folks involved in the pandemic response really messed up. What kind of legal trouble are they looking at? Well, the sorts actually threw out a number. It was yeah. something like $50 trillion in potential liabilities. No. But that's, that's not exactly pocket change, is it? No, that's a truly staggering amount. And it kind of hits home just how big the economic fallout from all this could be. I mean, if pharmaceutical companies, government agencies, research institutions, if they're found liable for damages tied to the pandemic, it could ripple through the entire global economy. That's crazy. We could see bankruptcies, lawsuits, maybe even whole industries reshaped. It's hard to even imagine the scale of it all. And remember, we're not even just talking about financial repercussions here. There's also the whole question of criminal charges. If investigators find proof that there was intentional wrongdoing, like a deliberate cover-up or suppression of information, well, then people could be facing some serious jail time. Which brings us back to that whole Ara Coac thing you were explaining, the one they usually use to take down organized crime rings. Right, exactly. The big challenge for investigators is going to be proving that there was a coordinated effort to deceive everyone. It can't just be individual mistakes or negligence. They need to show it was intentional. So what kind of evidence are they going to be looking for to build a case like that? Well, think of it this way. It's like putting together a puzzle. Investigators need every little piece of information that helps them understand the timeline. You know, the decisions that were made and who was calling the shots. So emails, internal memos, meeting minutes, stuff like that. Maybe even private conversations between the key players. You got it. They'll also be looking at scientific data lab records, early virus samples, anything they can get their hands on, basically anything that can shed light on the origins of the virus and whether anyone tried to hide or twist the truth about it. And don't forget about potential whistleblowers coming forward with inside information. That could be some of the most powerful evidence they could get. Oh, absolutely. Whistleblowers are often the key to cracking these kinds of cases, especially when you're dealing with powerful people and institutions. OK, so let's say they find all the evidence they need. Then what? Who actually has the authority to bring charges against someone like a high-ranking Chinese official? That's where things get really tricky. We're in uncharted waters here. There's no clear roadmap for holding a foreign government accountable for something like this, uh -huh. especially a pandemic of this scale. So are we talking about some kind of international court? Sanctions? Diplomatic pressure? What are the options? Okay. Honestly, it could be a mix of all those things. The U.S. could try to go through international courts, but that needs cooperation from other countries. And there's no guarantee of that. They could also slap on economic sanctions or try to isolate China diplomatically. Well, wouldn't that just escalate things and maybe even lead to more conflict? It's a definite risk. That's what makes this whole situation so delicate. The U.S. government has to balance the need for accountability with the potential consequences of their actions. It's like walking a tightrope. They need to make it clear that this kind of behavior won't fly. But they also can't risk triggering a global crisis. It's a tough spot to be in. And then there's the whole domestic political angle. These investigations are already highly politicized. Both sides are trying to use it to their advantage. It's going to be tough to keep the focus on truth and justice with all that noise going on. It's like everyone's got something to gain or lose here. Scientists, politicians, pharmaceutical companies, even everyday people who just want answers and someone to blame. It shows you just how deeply the pandemic has affected every aspect of our world. It's not just a health crisis. It's a societal crisis, a political crisis, and maybe even a turning point in how we approach global governance and international relations. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot to take in. It really is. All right. So we're back. And honestly, my head is still spinning from all this. Yeah. But you mentioned something kind of hopeful before the break. You said these investigations could actually lead to some positive changes. Is that right? Yeah, I think there's definitely potential for that. We've talked a lot about accountability and justice, which are obviously crucial. But this is also a chance to learn from the mistakes that were made, you know, and maybe build a better future from all of this. OK, so what would that look like? What kind of actual changes could we see? Well, on the national level, we might see big changes in how 
public health agencies like the FDA and CDC do things. There could be a push for more transparency, stricter rules, you know, ethical guidelines and all that. And they might even set up stronger systems for spotting and dealing with new threats before they get out of control. Right. And what about those conflicts of interest the source mentioned within the scientific community? If that all comes out, could that change how research is funded and published? Absolutely. We could see tighter regulations on conflicts of interest, and there might be more emphasis on sharing data and making sure research can be replicated. The focus could shift to making sure that scientific findings are all about truth, not about money or politics. So it's like a total reset of the system. Yeah, kind of. And that potential for a reset goes beyond the U.S. too. If these investigations actually lead to people being held responsible for the pandemic, well, it could set a huge precedent for international accountability. So future pandemics wouldn't just be a problem for one country to deal with. It would be a global issue. Exactly. We could see countries working together more closely on tracking diseases, you know, setting up early warning systems and coordinating their responses to outbreaks. And there might be more investment in global health infrastructure, especially in poorer countries. They're often hit the hardest by pandemics, after all. It's like that Dragonstone analogy from the source is playing out on a global scale now. Whoever controls the story about how the pandemic started, they also control the future of global health. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah, it is. And that's why it's so important for these investigations to be done right. They need to be thorough, transparent and fair. The stakes are incredibly high here, not just for the people who might be found guilty, but for the future of global health and how countries cooperate with each other. It's easy to get lost in all the legal stuff and the political drama, but we can't forget about the human cost of all of this. Millions of lives lost, families torn apart, economies wrecked. It's a tragedy. You're absolutely right. These investigations are really about justice for those who suffered, about remembering them and making sure nothing like this ever happens again. It's a heavy responsibility, but it's one we all have to share. We can't let fear or apathy stop us from demanding answers and holding our leaders accountable for what they did. Well said. And as we wrap up this deep dive, I want to leave our listeners with a challenge. Stay informed, talk about these issues, and demand transparency from your leaders. The future of global health depends on people being informed and engaged. Absolutely. The pandemic showed us that we're all connected. And what we do as individuals can impact the entire world. It's up to each of us to do our part to create a safer and healthier future for everyone. Well put. Thanks for joining us on this journey. We'll keep following these developments closely and keep you updated as things unfold and 